Good morning. I'm Dr. Huang. Today, I'm going to teach you a systematic method to write down the Lewis structures with resonance structures and formal charges. There are a lot of molecules and ions whose Lewis structures are very difficult to write down correctly. Here is a list of them. Well, if you can follow the procedures I'm teaching you here, it will be relatively easy and relatively fast to write down the correct Lewis structures with resonance structures and formal charges for any molecule or any ion. The first step of this method is to obtain a skeleton structure from an instructor. In a skeleton structure, a line or sometimes a dotted line tells us that there will be a chemical bond between the two atoms. However, I want to emphasize a line or sometimes a dotted line in a skeleton structure is not always a single bond in the Lewis structure. It can also be a double bond or a triple bond. In a skeleton structure, if there's no line between two atoms, that means there's no chemical bond between them. The second step of this method is to place the valence electrons next to each atom. The central nitrogen atom has five valence electrons. Each oxygen atom has six valence electrons. You can find the number of valence electrons of any atom from a periodic table. Nitrate ion has next one charge. Therefore, it has one additional electron. Now let me show you how I place the valence electrons next to each atom. You can start from any atom. Let's start from the central nitrogen atom. From the skeleton structure, the central nitrogen atom has three neighbors. Remember, we need one valence electron of the central nitrogen atom for each neighbor. Let's take the first valence electron of the central nitrogen atom and we place it between the central nitrogen atom and its neighbor on the left. Let's take the second valence electron of the central nitrogen atom and we place it between the central nitrogen atom and its neighbor on the right. Let's take the third valence electron of the central nitrogen atom and we place it between the central nitrogen atom and its neighbor at the bottom. Now we have two valence electrons left for the central nitrogen atom. Well, we will put them into one group. When we place the electrons left from the previous step into groups, we always put them into groups of two electrons unless we have odd number electrons left from the previous step. If we have odd number electrons left from the previous step, we will have one group with only one electron. All the other groups should have two electrons. In terms of the location of the two electrons, as long as you don't place them between the central nitrogen atom and any of its neighbors, it should be good. Let's leave them here. Now let's follow the same principle to place the valence electrons of the oxygen atoms next to each atom. Well, let's start from the oxygen atom on the left. From the skeleton structure, the oxygen atom on the left has only one neighbor, which is the central nitrogen atom. Therefore, we will take one of the valence electrons of the oxygen atom on the left and we place it between the oxygen atom on the left and its neighbor. Then we will place the five electrons left from the previous step into three groups. Remember, when we place the valence electrons left from the previous step into groups, we prefer to have groups of two electrons unless we have odd number electrons left from the previous step. If we have odd number electrons left from the previous step, we will have one group with only one electron. All the other groups should have two electrons. We will do the same for the other two oxygen atoms. Well, you may wonder, Dr. H, where do we place this additional electron? In general, we will place this electron next to the most electronegative atom in the molecule or ion. In this case, it should be the oxygen atom. However, we have three oxygen atoms. It seems you have to pick which oxygen atom you want to place this electron next to. Well, it does not matter. You can choose any oxygen atom. Let's place this additional electron next to the oxygen atom on the left. Well, every time when you add an electron to an atom, you will place next one form a charge next to that atom. 
What we are going to do next is we will replace the shared electrons between the two atoms with a single stick, which means a single bond in the Lewis structure. The next step is to make sure every atom will have an octet or extended octet because both the nitrogen atom and the oxygen atom belong to the second period. Therefore, they can only have an octet, not an extended octet. Now let me explain what is an octet. An octet means an atom should have eight octet electrons next to that atom. Octet electrons are the electrons we placed next to that atom. They include lone pair electrons and shared pair electrons. If you have a single electron, it should be also counted as an octet electron. Well, let's count. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. The oxygen atom on the right has 7 octet electrons. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Well, remember, our goal is to make sure every atom will have an octet, which means we have to increase the number of octet electrons for the oxygen atom on the right and the oxygen atom at the bottom. Well, there are two ways, and only two ways, to increase the number of octet electrons. One way is to share, the other way is to borrow. Let me explain them. To share means each atom will contribute an electron to form another pair of shared electrons between the two atoms. When we share a pair of electrons, the octet electrons for both atoms should increase by one. It will not create any formal charges. Let's put them back, and let me explain. What is to borrow? To borrow means one atom will take an electron from its direct neighbor. This is called to borrow. When we borrow an electron from its direct neighbor, the number of octet electrons will increase by one, and the number of octet electrons for the other atom will decrease by one. Plus, it will create two formal charges. The atom that receives an electron will have negative one formal charge. The other atom should have plus one formal charge. Let me put them back. We only borrow an electron from its direct neighbor if to share a pair of electrons will create a Lewis structure that will violate the rules. The reason we prefer to share a pair of electrons than to borrow an electron from its direct neighbor is because to borrow an electron from its direct neighbor will create two formal charges. Well, let's try to share first. Remember, when we are sharing another pair of electrons between the two atoms, the number of octet electrons for both atoms will increase by one. Therefore, the number of octet electrons for the central nitrogen atom will be nine, which is not allowed because nitrogen is the second period atom. Well, that means to share a pair of electrons will not work. Let's put them back. Well, let's try the second method to borrow an electron from its direct neighbor. Well, when the oxygen atom at the bottom borrow an electron from the central nitrogen atom, the number of octet electrons for the oxygen atom at the bottom will be eight. Then the number of octet electrons for the central nitrogen atom will be seven. If you're not sure, you can count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Well, do not forget, when you borrow an electron, you create two formal charges. The atom that receives an electron will have negative one formal charge. The other atom should have plus one formal charge. Well, it seems this structure is not ideal because we still have two atoms with less than eight octet electrons. 
Well, let's try to share between these two atoms. Let's see what is going to happen. Well, remember, when we are going to share another pair of electrons, the number of octet electrons for both atoms should increase by 1. Well, it seems every atom has an octet. Well, let's replace these two shared electrons with a single stick. Well, the Lewis structure we just got has three bonds, and one of the bonds is a double bond. Remember, if a Lewis structure has two or more bonds, and at least one of them is a double bond or a triple bond, you should try to see if you can find any resonance structures. Well, nitrate ion does have three resonance structures. In addition to this one, we have two more resonance structures. Now let me explain how to get other resonance structures from the Lewis structure we just got. In general, all resonance structures should have the same number of bonds and the same number of lone pair electrons. The original Lewis structure has 1, 2, 3, 4 bonds and 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 pairs of lone pair electrons. Therefore, the resonance structures should also have 4 bonds and 8 pairs of lone pair electrons. The first step is to rearrange the bonds. There are two more ways to rearrange the bonds. Let me show you both of them. The next step is to place the lone pair electrons next to the non-central atoms to make an octet for each non-central atom. Then, if you have any lone pair electrons left, you will place them next to the central atom. In this case, we do not have any lone pair electrons left. Then, they should be fine. But remember, we are not done yet. We have to calculate the formal charges of all atoms. If you calculate the formal charges correctly, this will be what you are going to get. Next one formal charge here. Next one formal charge here. And plus one formal charge for the central nitrogen atom. Next one formal charge here. Next one formal charge here. And plus one formal charge for the central nitrogen atom. This will be the three resonance structures of nitrate ion. If you are asked to give me the Lewis structure of nitrate ion during an exam or a quiz, you can present your answer in two different formats, either in a linear format or in a circular format. It doesn't matter which format you present your answer. Your answer must include all three resonance structures with all non-zero formal charges labeled correctly. You also need to include double arrows between resonance structures. The double arrows tell us that this is one Lewis structure of one ion, not three different Lewis structures of three different ions. It's the same for the circular format. The double arrows tell us that this is one Lewis structure of one ion, not three different Lewis structures of three different ions.